Our reading today is not from biblical scripture. It is a poem that comes from this book, which I do recommend, called Poet Warrior by our United States Poet Laureate, Joy Harjo. And I was first told about this book by our friend Anne Manning, who recently died. And so part of my reading is in memory and honor of her, but also as I read this, when I got to this poem, I thought of these nine. So I wanted to read this. It is called, For Calling the Spirit Back from Wandering the Earth in Its Human Feet. Put down that bag of potato chips, that white bread, that bottle of pop. Turn off that cell phone, computer, and remote control. Open the door and then close it behind you. Take a breath. Offered by friendly winds, they travel the earth gathering essences of plants to clean. Give back with gratitude. If you sing, it will give your spirit lift to fly to the star's ears and back. Acknowledge this earth who has cared for you since you were a dream planting itself precisely within your parents' desire. Let your feet take you to the encampment of the guardians who have known you before time, who will be there after time. They sit before the fire that has been there without time. Let the earth Stabilize your post-colonial insecure jitters. Be respectful of the small insects, birds, and animal people who accompany you. Ask their forgiveness for the harm we humans have brought down upon them. Don't worry. The heart knows the way, though there may be high-rises, interstates, checkpoints, armed soldiers, massacres, wars, and those who will despise you because they despise themselves. The journey might take you a few hours, a day, a year, a few years, a hundred, a thousand, or even more. Watch your mind. Without training, it might run away and leave your heart for the immense human feast set by the thieves of time. Do not hold regrets. When you find your way to the circle, to the fire kept burning by the keepers of your soul, you will be welcomed. You must clean yourself. Cut the ties you have to failure and shame. Let go the pain you are holding in your mind, your shoulders, your heart, all the way to your feet. Let go of the pain of your ancestors to make way for those who are heading in our direction. Ask for forgiveness. Call upon the help of those who love you. Call yourself back. You might find yourself caught in corners and creases of shame, judgment, and human abuse. You must call in a way that your spirit will want to return. Speak to it as you would to a beloved child. Welcome your spirit back from its wandering. It will return in pieces, in tatters. Gather them together they will be so happy to be found after being lost for so long. And your spirit will need to sleep a while after it is bathed and given clean clothes, and now you can have a party. Invite everyone you know who loves you and supports you, and keep room for those who have no other place to go. Make a giveaway, and remember, keep the speeches short. Then you must do this. Help the next person find their way through the dark. Welcome, everyone, to this important day in the life of our church community. It has been an absolute joy. I cannot even tell you with words that make sense coming out of my mouth how much I have enjoyed the last 14 months, 
with these nine young people, these thoughtful, kind, compassionate, questioning ninth graders. These are each people that you all need to know. You do. And they need to know you. And I hope today is the beginning of finding each other. For the last year, we have been explorers together. We've, we've asked big, big questions about ourselves and each other. We explored other religions and our own changing concepts of God. We trace some of the lines of Christianity from the birth of Yeshua, who we call Jesus, until today. The capstone of this year was the writing of a What I Believe Now statement. And per the tradition of this community, this writing was not a demonstration of a regurgitation of a certain set of beliefs, but rather a way of naming, putting into those insignificant, insufficient words what one believes right now, knowing that it will shift and change throughout life. This was a practice and a lifelong exercise and you will hear selections from each of the confirmands shortly. And while their parents are, of course, the most important spiritual guides in their life, each young person was also assigned a companion who took this journey with them. And these companions took the first vulnerable step of naming publicly what they believe back in the fall. They each wrote their own what I believe now statement, and they shared it with each other and with the ninth graders. And this was important for many reasons, three of which I'll name. Confirmation students should, shouldn't be the only ones expected to do this kind of work. It showed a certain amount of solidarity and mutuality in the project. And hopefully, I hope it showed our ninth graders that not all adults believe the same things. It's easy to think we do sometimes. And with that, my brief message today is my own sharing of my what I believe now statement in solidarity with this group and their companions. And this can be a vulnerable, meaningful, complicated, frustrating, illuminating, and beautiful project. And I encourage you all to do the same. Even if you've done it in the past, do it again and see how it's different. Mine is different than it was last time I did the same thing. And then share it with someone. And if you need someone to share it with, I would love to hear it. What I believe now. I believe that nothing is more important than restoration and that is my working definition of God. I believe that God is beyond imagination and no image can be formed or held. I believe that God is within us and surrounds us and most importantly fills the spaces between us. And I believe that all living things and I believe especially trees are a manifestation of the great possibilities of God. I believe that humans are not as central to the living world as we often behave. We are one part of an interconnected system that can thrive or fail together. And that interconnected system is one way that God makes God's self known. And that interconnection may very well be God. I believe that all people are worthy of love especially when we don't know how to love them. I was taught that as a child, and I have wrestled with it ever since. I believe that questions are more meaningful than answers. Questions are how we express our wonder and awe at the world around us, and answers are often the end to the conversation. But questions continue the talking, the learning, and the wonder. I believe that the Bible is not a book of obedience, but a book of exploration. About people who wrestled with their own history and tried to make meaning out of it all. 
And to me, the person we call Jesus is the most important figure in that exploration. That Jesus who said, love God, yourself, and the other. That Jesus who says to give up everything and follow. I believe that is difficult to do. I believe that prophetic voices still exist today and are found where prophetic voices have always existed, on the margins. People of color, indigenous people, immigrants, refugees, LBTQ plus folk, the disabled, the poor, the imprisoned, children, those who have been hidden away, all people who live on the margins of the dominant culture and the status quo have the ability to speak prophetically. And I believe that it is the responsibility of those of us in the dominant culture to listen and to act. I believe that white people are responsible for the creation and continuance of the systems and structures of white supremacy. And it is our responsibility and calling to dismantle it. Our own restoration is dependent on giving things up and participating in changing the caste system that has been created for us. I believe that words, how we speak, is very important. And I also believe that what we do, the actions we take, defines who we are and shows how we listen to the ever-present but mysterious voice of God. I believe the enduring life force of God is found in all living things regardless of sentience and especially regardless of skin color, gender, age, sexuality, and ability. God is too limitless to be limited. I believe that we live in a culture that celebrates violence, greed, and unnecessary stratification, and this is antithetical to God. I believe it is my responsibility to live against that. I believe that all people have at least one calling in this world, and it is our responsibility to live it with authenticity. And this calling does not have to be grand, but it does need to be life-giving, purposeful, and generous. I believe that a religion without an aspect of the divine feminine is not yet fully realized. I believe that faith communities are uniquely important because we can do things differently here. And yet I have witnessed that we are so often unwilling to take the risks to do so. I believe that life is hard enough without making it harder on each other. And I believe that it is a mark of maturity that these ninth graders are going to model for us. To be able to wrestle with and name what it is that you hold true, that you find important, and that you believe right now, and then maintain the wisdom to recognize its eventual changes. May it be so with your own This I Believe Now statements.